Hey there people, it's me Junebug here again for another True Crime Time. So I think last week went a little bit better than the first one. Still very disappointed in my first one. But today, as promised, yes another True Crime Time, but today it is not a massacre. Woohoo! So, still people dying unfortunately, but it's only one. If that's better or not. <laughs> But today we'll be covering a case when I started to look into it, I thought there would be way more information than there was, but there was not. There's not a ton known about like the background of this person. It mainly focuses, focuses on her legacy, which isn't even really her legacy. I'll get into it. But anyway, hope y'all can hear me. I turned all the fans off so it's hot in here but hopefully you can hear me okay and I shifted so I'm in the corner now of the couch super fun but today we'll be talking about the murder of Delia Green I believe I'm pronouncing it right I had to look up like the little videos to see if it's pronounced correctly because I thought it was Delia I was like that sounds really wrong I was like maybe it's Delia I was like that also sounds wrong it's Delia. So I believe it's Delia Green. And she, unfortunately, this occurred on Christmas, so December 25th of 1900. And she was 14 years old. There's been another source that says she was 13, but she was 13 or 14 years old. And this happened in Savannah, Georgia. And the silver lining, small silver lining, is that this is a solved case. So, let's get into it. So Delia Green was a 13, 14 year old African American girl. Not much is known about like her life up until that point or about her parents or how her parents reacted to any of this. If they were even still around, like there isn't much known about her. At least that I could find. But anyway, on Christmas Eve, because remember she passed on Christmas Day, she went with her boyfriend. I don't know if they were called boyfriends back then or if that was a thing. It was her beau of about four months, or some sources say it was strictly a sexual relationship. I'm not here to judge. But they went to a gathering or a party. They didn't mention if anyone else was there besides them and the owners of the home, which was Willie and Emma West. And then the boyfriend's name in this case is Moses Cooney Houston and he was 15 or 16 years old depending on the source but like her there was still a couple he was a couple years older than her is what I'm trying to say and then at some point during the night he called Delia his wife which I don't know why if you meant it as a joke but she did not take kindly to this she it's like I'm not your wife I am a lady still like, I, we've only been together for a few months, like, don't be calling me your wife. And then when she got irritated with him, she also called him a son of a bitch, which he did not like, so he decided to start slut-shaming her at the party in front of everyone, saying he's had her more times than he has toes and fingers, the source said, which I will link in the description box below. And just... Giving it to her that she just loved the sex and that's all she was in it for and just like really going on her. So not a good boyfriend. And then she called him a liar for this obviously because even if it's true she doesn't want the people at the party to know. And then he got mad again and just burst up, grabbed one of Willie's guns and shot her in the groin. And bolted shot her and bolted because she called him a liar and a son of a bitch. What a tough man he is. And then he obviously was chased down by Willie West, who's owner of the house, and gun he used to shoot Delia, and Willie handed him over to the police. And as he was being handed over to the police, Moses said he would do it again if he had the chance. So Willie said this is basically cold-blooded murder. Like, I don't know if it well, I'm sure it could get more cold-blooded murdery, but that's not the point. 
but unfortunately Delia, because this was 1900, there was no ambulance to come and get her, take her to the hospital, and medical procedures were obviously not as up to date as they are now. So she unfortunately died from her wound, and she was like in agonizing pain until she died on Christmas Day. So one source says it was 3 a.m. on Christmas Day, or it was later in the afternoon during Christmas. But either way, not the ideal day to go. Well, no day's ideal to go, but you know what I'm saying. And to this day, she is buried in an unmarked grave in Savannah, Georgia, in the Laurel Grove Cemetery South. They probably once knew where her plot was, but if you... It's considered lost now if you look at the Plot Finder website. And I saw people recently have been donating her flowers, so I'm happy about that. I don't know where they put them, but it's still the thought that counts. And then, during his trial, Moses, the now ex-boyfriend, who shot Delia in the groin and bolted, wore, like, kids' clothes and super short pants to the trial to make it really seem that he was young and innocent, he didn't know what he was doing. And this trial took place in the spring of 1901, so it was a few months after this had happened. I guess they were waiting for the holidays to pass. But also in court, as we know, he said earlier that he would do it again if he had the chance. In the court, he was trying to make himself seem so young and innocent. He said it was an accident that him and Willie were fighting over the gun for some reason, and then it accidentally went off and shot her. Well, they didn't believe that crap, but they they did kind of fall for his ruse of dressing up as this young younger boy and that he was so young and didn't know what he was doing, his brain wasn't fully developed. So instead of getting a death sentence, which, that's a whole other topic, people deserve death sentence or not, but he was sentenced to life in prison. Which makes sense to me. But then, because he was such a tender age, he only served 12 years of it. 12 years before he was released on the parole. One moment. Sorry about that, y'all. Bianca the bunny was eating at her baby gate. But anyway, he was sentenced to life in prison, but since he was such a tender age, they wanted to give him a second chance, and he was released, literally in his prime, 12 years after being in prison on parole. So he moved to New York, where he continued to live a life of crime. Shocker. You ended up murdering someone when you're 15 years old. It's not going to go up from there. But he moves to New York and lived a life of crime until his death in 1927. And not much else is known about him. Granted, I didn't do a ton of research on him. The focus was of Delia. But yet, yeah, the articles I read still focus a lot on his trial. What I mentioned earlier about Delia's legacy from this was all the music that's been written about her since she's been murdered. It started a few years after she was murdered and there have been songs being written about her or remakes of songs written about her for decades. For a century now, over a century. And then some of the first people who wrote songs about her were Blake Alfonso Higgs and Blind Willie McTell. Not the Willie that put Moses in jail, but another one. This one was blind. And he wrote a song called Little Delia. There's been debates if he wrote the first song or Blake Alfonso Higgs did, and yada yada. That's besides the point, I think. Anyway, some other people that have written songs about her or done remakes about her include Bob Dylan, Pete Seeger, David Bromberg, Josh White, Harry Belafonte, I just like saying Belafonte. Bud and Travis, Pearl Ives, the Kingston Trio, Pat Boone, Bobby Bear, Waylon Jennings, and then most famously Johnny Cash. And I don't, I've never heard any of these songs that I'm aware of, so I don't know if Johnny Cash had the best version, but he definitely, <laughs> in his video, he had Kate Moss play Delia. That's right, and I did double check Kate Moss is in fact white. Why he had Kate Moss play her, I don't know, but he did. Maybe he didn't know. Seems very unlikely, but maybe he didn't. But out of 
And like all the songs seem to focus on the killer or singing it from his point of view, never from Delia's. And they kind of slut shame her in a lot of these songs when she was just 14 years old and she's buried in an unmarked grave. Like all these male singers, I believe they're all male, made money from songs about her murder, but none of them even bought her a headstone for her grave, which the lady in the article I wrote also mentioned that. And like that is very true. So that is the very short story of Delia Green. I don't know what's coming up next week. I forgot already. But I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you can do maybe some more digging and try to find more about her. I would love to show a photo of her in the video, but the ones they say they don't have any more photos of her or don't know for sure if it's her. Because I could definitely look up, you know, Delia Green and people will show up, but I don't know if it's her. Obviously, I won't know. But that is it for today, guys. I hope you like this story, and I hope it's still better than my first video. Maybe I'll even add spooky music this time to see if it works and not just appears when it wants to. Bye, guys.